Welcome to Lesson 3A of ATC Pro. This lesson will introduce the basic features and layout of the Radar Scope or Terminal Controller Workstation in ATC Pro. This is the Radar Scope for ATC Pro where you will be spending most of your time and I just want to introduce you to some of the basic features. Note that I have pressed the pause key to freeze the action for the demonstration. In the very center of the scope, with the rings radiating out from it, is the primary airport for the facility, in this case Albuquerque Sunport. There's a basic video map that comes up by default that shows the runway layout with the dashed runway center lines and some basic airspace boundaries. Notice there is a green bar at the top that's called the Display Control Bar, or DCB. There's various buttons that access menus and features. If you press the shift button on the far right side, that gives you another array of buttons. Pressing shift again brings you back to the first set of buttons. I won't go into all those features now, that's for the next lesson, 3B. The concentric circles here are called range rings and they radiate out from the center airport and the radius distance can be adjusted. Notice up at the top on the green DCB bar, it says range 48. That is the current range of the scope in the number of nautical miles that are visible. Then here where it says RR20, that's the distance between the range rings and nautical miles. Another thing you have on the scope are those rows of dials on either side. Those are called the display control panels or DCP. Each one of those adjusts something on the scope and I won't go into that right now but you can feel free to experiment to see what they do. In order to change something, you put your mouse pointer over the top of the dial and just roll the mouse wheel and that will change the setting as the dial rotates. Notice you can see what the value is on the DCB at the top. If you want to hide the DCP knobs, you click any area beside the knobs. To show the knobs again, click on the line on the edge of the screen, like this. Around the edge of the scope area are little numbers that represent the headings of the compass. They are a guide to how the objects on the scope are oriented to magnetic north. It makes it easier to give compass headings to commands to aircraft to use these numbers as a guide. Other features you have on the scope are floating windows or panels. This one here is the COM panel for displaying and changing radio frequencies while controlling. This panel is turned on with the second icon on the lower right DCP. I'll explain how it works in Lesson 3C. Notice when you click on a window that it changes the compass heading marks around the outer edge of the scope to red. When these lines are red, it lets you know that the main scope does not have the program focus. A secondary window has focus. It's important when you start controlling to click in the middle of the scope until those red lines turn white to make sure that the scope has focus. Otherwise, any keystroke commands or functions will not be noticed by the program. Another floating menu is the communications history down here which shows you a text listing of all the communications that are going on between the controllers and the aircraft. This panel is turned on with the first icon on the lower right DCP. I will provide more detail in Lesson 3D. If you click on the third icon on the lower right DCP, it will bring up the information panel window. I will talk about this window in Lesson 3E. The fourth icon down will bring up the flight strip panel that shows strips for each aircraft under your control with essential information about the aircraft, flight plan, and clearances given. I will talk about this window in Lesson 3F. Here's some other things you have on the scope itself. The group of lines in the upper left corner is called the system status area. There's important information for your controlling session that shows up here. There is the system time and universal coordinated time, or Zulu time, the barometric pressure or altimeter setting, which in this case is 30.33 inches of mercury. Also shown is the traffic flow direction based on current winds and the wind speed and direction for the runways in use. There are some other things shown that I'll skip over since they are not as important right now when you're getting started. Also on the left side of the scope you have things like the low altitude collision alert box that appears here when you have an alert, the flight plan list for the aircraft that are departing, and preview area where text shows up when you type in something on the keyboard. I'm doing it right now. The flight plan list here shows aircraft that are in the area but not yet tracked. They will usually be assigned to one of the arrival or departure lists. Each line of the list has a two digit ID or tab number. 
if it has been assigned yet, the aircraft call sign, the four-digit transponder or squawk code, and the aircraft altitude in hundreds of feet. Over on the right-hand side of the scope, you have the sign-on list that shows you which positions are available in the simulation. Each line of who is signed in begins with the position ID followed by radio frequency, the position name, and lastly the initials of the controller. If the initials are AI, that means the computer is controlling. If the initials are UC, that means the position is controlled by the user. It is possible to sign on or off to any position during your shift using a key sequence. There are also tower lists with arriving and departing aircraft. Each list is identified on the top line with a number, the airport code, the position name, and either arrival, ARR, or departure, DEP. The information on each line starts with a two-digit ID or tab number, the aircraft call sign, then four-digit transponder or squawk code, the current aircraft altitude in hundreds of feet, and lastly for departures, the one-letter departure fix ID code. Be sure to study the keyboard reference sheets and diagrams available on our support website for how to use keystrokes to access commands and features on the scope. That is the basic layout and features of the scope. The next parts of Lesson 3 will elaborate on what I have introduced here. You are ready for the next Lesson 3B.